Welcome to Extension Connection on Super Talk 1270. Thoughtful information and discussion with experts from both Burley and Morton County Extension Service offices. Extension Connection provides advice on family nutrition, issues in agriculture, lawn and garden, community leadership, flood recovery, homeowner concerns, and so much more. Live from the Super Talk 1270 News Studio, this is Extension Connection. Good morning and welcome back to Extension Connection. This week you are with Burley County. My name is Chandra zeman Bolinski, and I'm happy to be here with my radio buddy, Amelia <laughs> Dahl. Good morning. Uh, yeah, and you can introduce yourself. I'm Amelia Dahl, 4-H Youth Development Agent over in Burley County. You know, folks, we have something that came across our desk from our specialists in Fargo with NDSU Extension Service, and we thought this would be a great topic to talk about today. So we're just going to talk all things about how to deal with the stress that can be created from terrorism and the various acts that are happening in the news right now. I know that last weekend, I am you know, a lot of you know, I'm also in the Army Reserve and here during our drill, as we're working with each other, this whole thing in Paris happened and it was mm-hmm. just devastating. And especially, It's nice that we have each other. Um, you know, sometimes when you're serving in the military, you have this added stress that, whoa, we might have to go somewhere now. Right. And so it was good to have one another. Uh, we'll talk a little bit of specifically about how to address this subject with your children. So first off, though, let's talk about what terrorism is, right, Amelia? Let's maybe define it for everybody and so that we're on the same page. But we have a nice publication here if you're able to get to our Burley County extension website it's publication number fs foxtrot sierra 635 so feel free to pull that up and follow along as we work with this that document. was a very t- military way for you <laughs> to explain how to get there <laughs> <laughs> you know this is how some things go in my world but you know terrorism let's define it so terrorism it says essentially consists of planned use of violence especially th- or the threat of violence especially as it pertains to targeting civilians groups or societies with the intent to kill, injure, harm, or coerce through fear and terror. So it's kind of a long uh, explanation and definition, but, you know, it's it's people that have an intention to hurt. Right, and it's often with the... In- the- Often in pursuit of political or ideological goals. Thank you. That was the end of it. Yeah. You're right. And so there's a lot of things that tie in, but bad guys that intend to hurt, and it's really for uh, targeting groups of people that aren't exactly trained on how to handle it. We're talking even children in schools. Yep. You know, sometimes they target medical facilities so that people can't go to get help if they're injured. I know that was the case um, in my experience overseas. Uh, you know, I'm, it was in a medical unit and they always targeted us. So, well, it's just like, I don't know if you ever watched MASH yes, growing up, but they always, I always watched that with my yeah, dad and they yeah. always targeted the, the, the hospital. hospital. That's exactly right. So, let's get into talking to children about terrorism. Just as a whole, that subject kind of gives me a little anxiety. I'm like, it what does. do I do? You know? Well, and it's kind of scary. Um, my husband and I, we commute to work yeah. together. Yeah. And we always listen to the news in the morning. And so, after this whole terrorist thing happened, there was a lot of news on about that. And yeah. so, we actually had William, our four year old, mm-hmm. Ask why people were hurting each other. So he, you did experience this. Yeah, it's tough to deal yeah. with. Like, yep, that's right. You're, how do you explain to a four-year-old? Well, buddy, those, you know, sometimes people are just mean. Yeah. And William's response was, "Well, do they go to timeout then?" No, <laughs> oh, and so yeah. like explaining that it is tough. And so as parents, you don't always think about. There may be stuff around that your kids are picking up on that you, even as much as you shelter them and try not to tell them, they have friends at school that talk about it. They may overhear it on the news. Mm -hmm. Your teacher's talking about it in the hallway. So it's really good to be prepared about how to talk to them about it. Right. Very much so. Uh, You know, and what you said is very interesting because this publication and, and a lot of our resources here that we have in front of us indicate that children and even as young as they can 
you know, yeah, talk. Yeah, so probably even younger even. Um, they will pick up what you're listening to. Yep. And that's a big recurring theme here in our documentation. And it does talk about you know, there's various different ways to discuss this subject with children, and they break it down into age groups. So talking to children ages 4 to 8, 9 to 13, 14 to 18, and, you know, that it does make sense. They're in different places, and a lot of them have the same type of method. It's just, you know, the you audience it. and how to approach it. Yeah. So, you know, let's talk about that a little bit here. So, you know, he's he talks about, what it, was his question to you again? Why are people mean? Okay. And so actually, I'd like to talk about that for a second. It says, if you can focus on harmful acts versus evil people right. when, when you're responding to those types of things. So that's one method. If you can form your questions to the children that way, common reactions of young children. Let's get into this with the four to eight year olds. Separation concerns or fears like clinging to their parents. I can definitely see that. Yep. Tantrums or irritability. And with really with a four to eight year old, right? That could be because you picked out the wrong pair of socks. And that's true. <laughs> I mean, that's exactly. So, it. so you know, but an increase in the amount of tantrums okay. you're seeing is definitely a sign to be watch- watching for. Right, a change in typical demeanor, probably. I got gotcha. you. So anger or aggression, um, withdrawal or restlessness. Let's see, there's a couple more here that we want to talk about. Regressive behaviors like thumb sucking, clinging to adults when they yep. are a little too old to be doing that. Yeah, okay. so like if you have a kid who hasn't sucked their thumb for years mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden they start th- sucking their mm-hmm. thumb again or insisting that they have a specific blanket when they go to bed, that's just their their way of security for them because it's something that's normal. So if you as mom aren't right there, they have something that's standard right. in there. Right. Being because kids, especially this young, are very in the moment Mm -hmm. and they aren't thinking about, you know, in eight hours, I'm going to wake up and mom's going to be here. They're thinking right now, mom Mm -hmm. is not here and I don't like it. Right. And how am I going to cope with it? Right. And like you said, standards. So even, you know, a consistency in your scheduling and things of that nature, too, is helpful. That's really helpful for that age group in general, I suppose. Yeah. Well, okay, and then, you know, the last one here is sleep or physical problems if they haven't had nightmares or terrors or something of that nature, and they're starting to. That could be in response to what's going on around them and how you're exposing them to what's happened in the world. Yep. So, you know, when we come back here, we're going to take a little break, and we're then going to talk a little bit about what to say and do with children as it pertains to terrorism. Thank you. Right now, 30. Bobcat Hockey, live on the radio or anywhere with the Radio Pump app. Supertalk1270.com. Hi, everybody. You've joined Extension Connection on Supertalk 1270 Radio. My name is Chandra Zeman Belinsky, and we're with Burley County this week. I'm the Family and Consumer Sciences agent, and I'm here with Amelia Dahl. Good morning. Amelia Dahl, 4 H Development Agent. Today, we're talking about how to discuss terrorism in your house, especially with children. But we do recognize that terrorism can be stressful for adults, too. Uh, when Before the break, we, ta- we were talking a little bit about how to talk to young children, specifically ages 4 to 8, about terrorism. And this could include also school violence and, and the things that we've seen go on in the last decade, at least. Yep. So... We've talked about common reactions. You know, they might not be sleeping well. They might be clinging to you now. You know, changes in behavior. And it could be how much you're exposing them to uh, what's going on in the world, how much news you're watching. And and so it actually indicates here some things to do or to say. Monitor adult those adult conversations around your children. Yeah, kids, especially at this age, is, age are sponges. Mm-hmm. They soak yeah. up everything and... Nothing is more, nothing proves this point more than the first time your child drops the F bomb oh because boy. they heard it somewhere. Right, right. <laughs> and so right. they pick up things that you're talking about in the news as well and that are being seen on TV or heard on the radio. On the radio, in the car, exactly. So it says, 
avoid talking about enemies or violence because it can actually upset young children. And I certainly can see that. mm -hmm, it, It seems very common sense. So, you know, just monitor those conversations around the children, whether it be you saying it or even like you say, the media. So what you have on in the radio. Ask children to share their thoughts and feelings with you. And it says really to listen to, to and don't interrupt them. And I think one thing with this is to remember that sometimes kids have a tough time putting into words what they're feeling. Okay. So you can use play, drawing, or have, have hmm. them help tell a story hmm. to convey that information because... I know at least my son, when he would say, oh, what did, what did you do at daycare today, William? Um, we played. Mm-hmm. Um, but once you get him talking about it and, mm-hmm. you know, tell start maybe telling a story or have him draw or show you, mm-hmm. then you're more apt to get a more realistic yeah. version of what is actually right. going on. And so if, and to add to that, if they aren't sure of really what feelings how to put it into words because they're still learning the language and how to mm-hmm. communicate. So actually ask them, are you feeling scared or do you feel angry? And and see if they're able to process it that way to communicate to you what they're feeling inside. Yeah, labeling emotions is tough for kids yes. to do. So the earlier we can start working with them on putting labels mm-hmm. to their emotion, the better it is for them and for you because then they can come to you and say, I'm frustrated. Mm -hmm. That's right. And rather than exhibiting these signs of frustration, Mm -hmm. they're able to say, I'm frustrated, and you can both work through that together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with my experience in working with especially the toddler age, so now that's a little younger than we're talking here, four to eight-year-olds, but if you're able to, if you have children younger here yet, you may not be discussing how to handle terrorism, but you can actually very much so get them on the right track to processing their feelings. And the important thing with the toddler age group is that we want to recognize that it's okay to feel frustrated. Mm-hmm. And that's a, a ter- you know, a sentence that you can actually say, it's okay to be angry, yep. um, you know, and, and kind of give them an anger space in the room or something where they can go to, if, if they do it in the form of a tantrum, just say, it's okay, go to your anger corner or, you know, to your yep. timeout corner or something. So validate that it's actually okay to have those feelings versus feeling anxiety toward those what yep. we think negative because thoughts if, are. if kids think that they're getting in trouble for feeling angry or frustrated, yep. then that's going to be what they try to avoid showing rather than very well said. The action that's yeah. getting them there. Yeah. And in you know those are human uh, feelings, mm-hmm. so we have to be able to process them all. So back to what to say and do as we're talking to our kids about terrorism. Uh, allow repetitive questions and with the age group of four to eight as well as nine to 13 we see those repetitive questions especially about events that are happening so just allow it and one thing that um we do with william is once he's asked the question a few Mm -hmm. times is we ask him the question okay because it kind of helps him process and that's good to do with these age groups whether you're talking about terrorism or what's for dinner tonight um after you've answered that question a few times, turn the question on them and say, why is this? Mm -hmm. Because it allows them to process and not just hear it, but also say it. Mm -hmm. And that's how humans learn. Sure. Okay, that's actually, that's interesting to me since I'm not quite there yet. So yeah. I actually look forward to it when we have these conversations. <laughs> so, you know, give honest and clear answers. Again, we said earlier, focus on the harmful acts versus bad people or evil people. Okay, and, you know, it's always good to give physical comfort. And at the end or even the beginning or middle of your conversation, offer a few hugs. Yep. So uh, anything to add there with four to eight-year-olds? I don't Um, think so. Just don't be surprised mm -hmm. when it happens because it's going to They're going to ask. They're going to ask. It's it's a scary reality. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I don't think that it's going anywhere any quickly Mm -hmm. yeah it's going to be a part of their lives probably for the rest of their lives yeah so if we help them understand it now it's going to help when they get to that 10 year old 18 year old age when they're processing things Mm -hmm. differently right right and so now let's talk about that age group so talking to adolescents 9 to 13 year olds 
the common reactions of adolescents, some of them are similar to 48 year olds, you know, fears and anxiety, uh, especially of being alone. And so at four to eight, they were clinging to you as parents. Nine to 13 year olds won't do that, but they will um, express concern about, you know, being alone, even at at the house or something of that nature. And I think with nine to 13 year olds, what you're going to see is a lot more empathy Um, Because Mm -hmm. that's really the age that kids are starting to learn even what empathy means. And they have a funny way of showing it because they internalize it Mm -hmm. and they think it's going to happen to them. Right. So if the, you know, the attacks that happened in Paris. Yep. Paris is a very different setting than Bismarck, North Dakota. Right. Very different setting. But these kids in this 9 to 13 year old age tend to kind of fester on that thought and work themselves up into the this is going to happen to me. What if this happens to me? What if my mom is there? Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's, it's a tough age. Nine to 13 is a yeah. tough age yeah, period. It is. Um, but when you have these external issues, it makes it even Well, and that's more exactly right. It's, you know, if they're external, especially now, I mean, this is really something that applies to all age groups, but in this age group specifically with nine to 13 year olds, if the parents are preoccupied with dealing with their own stressors, especially as it pertains to terrorism, the children will lash out sometimes at their parents, you know, to their peers, to their siblings. They'll show anger or aggression. So be careful how much stress you're allowing into, you know, your your environment at home. Right. And actually, this is always interesting to me. Before mm-hmm. I came to work at Extension, I worked with adults and children with developmental disabilities. And one thing we always taught our staff is, People lash out at the people that are close to them. Right. And so if your child is all of a sudden lashing out at you, okay. it means mo- two, one, uh, means several things. One, they need attention. Okay. And this is their way of coping to get it. Sure. And two, they feel comfortable enough around you that they don't think that it's going to cause permanent damage to the relationship that you have. And mm. it's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Um, we see this a lot with people with autism, that they tend to hit or kick parents, close caregivers, because those people always come back into their lives. Mm-hmm. Um, so same applies to these adolescent kids where they're mad at you and the best way to get your attention is to be aggressive with you. Mm-hmm. But they know that as mom or as dad or aunt or uncle or whatever role you play, Mm -hmm. you will always come back to them. Well, since we really elaborated on that being a concern, let's actually talk just a second about what to do in that situation because we've been talking about, you know, the reactions, but what to say and do in that case. And really, they're begging for you to have a conversation and to express what they're processing internally. Um, So, you know, look for those signs to be able to take a five minutes, sit down and talk about it. (laughs) Absolutely. So that's the important thing. Ask questions so they can give you direct answers in this case with this age group. Figure out what they know about the event. You don't want to give them a lot of information that they don't need because that's Mm -hmm. just going to stress them out more. So have them really lead the conversation and ask what they know. Okay. And it also allows you the opportunity if they tell you something that's not accurate you right. can correct that. Right. Um, they're at a very vulnerable age right now mm-hmm. in the 9 to 13. And so if you aren't careful mm-hmm. about, again, what's being said around them and what you're telling them, it can have detrimental effects mm-hmm. on them. So let them be the leader of the conversation. Yeah. And so we recognize that obviously you're not going to be able to raise them in a bubble. They're going to probably get this information if even if you're not ex- you know, exposing them at home. So this is why we're talking here, how to talk to your kids about terrorism. So let's keep going. Nine to 13 year olds. They can also experience sadness about events and loss. Um, They can experience sleep disturbances, just like the younger kids. This repetitive thoughts and questions, um, discussion and concern, and then exaggerated attempts to protect other people, even adults. So we'll talk a little bit after the break here about how to talk to the nine to 13 year olds about terrorism. Right now, 30. Super Talk 1270. Home of the Bismarck Bobcats and high school sports. Listen online or anywhere on the Radio Pub app. Super Talk 1270. 
Good morning and welcome back to Extension Connection. This is Chandra. You're with Burley County today. I'm the Family and Consumer Sciences Agent and I'm joined here with Amelia Dahl. Good morning. 4-H Youth Development Agent. Yes, and we are talking today about how to talk to your kids about terrorism. And even a little bit later, probably about how it can affect adults, you know, just stress. And we left before the break talking about some signs that you can look for with your 9 to 13 year olds as you're working with adolescents and you know how to talk to them here is what we're going to get into what you know how to address terrorism with your 9 to 13 year old we did say that if there's certain behavior earlier especially anger or aggression toward you and those that they love most that they're begging for you to have a conversation and Amelia did mention something when you're having those conversations you know let them tell you what they know about the event versus you leading the conversation. And because you may be teaching them yeah. stuff that they mes- don't necessarily need to be dealing with. Right. They may not point. know that portion of the right. story. Right. So that makes a lot of sense. So you know, find out from them if they have any other additional questions as you're talking with them. Um, and correct any misinformation I think you had mentioned, yep. too. So those conversations are really important. You can start with a hug. That physical reassurance is very important. And with this age group specifically, uh, talking about physical reassurance, but just reassuring the children that about their safety and that you are there for them. Right. That they have a baseline of safety with you as a parent. And then with this age, we also see, like we had mentioned, kids having internalizing a lot of it okay. um, so allowing them or helping them participate in different opportunities um, like attending a memorial service making a donation or doing community service or other appropriate activities mm. around that yeah um, allows them to kind of allows them to feel a sense of okay this I can handle this I'm gonna get through this I can help with this this is my contribution and maybe take some of that burden of empathy off Mm -hmm. of them. Yes. And that's where, like Amelia said earlier, this age group is learning that. And it it does reiterate a a few times, you know, how they can process those feelings um, toward the victims. Right. So... Uh, you know, I, I like this little note here. Take a media break. And, and what we mean by that is even for yourself as the adult, you know, stop listening to this on the news at, on a consistent basis. And so take a break from the media sometimes if you feel that you need it and watch the exposure. Right. Because there's a lot of stuff happening in the world. Mm-hmm. And um, news always tends to talk talk about those big things yeah. you know the attacks in paris the syrian refugees that's what we're hearing about but there's also a lot of good happening mm-hmm. in the world and so we need to ourselves remember that and also show our kids that right right you know i actually let me go back to a story real quick when i was in college i went to the university of minnesota in the twin cities and i remember you know when you're in college you think oh, boy and there's no stress worse than college stress and then you get out in the real world and you're like you really didn't have that much i would stress. go back to college <laughs> right <laughs> right but you know i mean whatever your mindset is and you're processing stress differently at that age uh, you know i remember specifically that if I had a stressful day, and I had a lot of things due or something of that nature, I remember thinking, I love watching the morning news. I want to know what's going on, but I couldn't come home and watch the evening news. Mm-hmm. So if that's an example of, you know, taking a media break, I knew that I just, I couldn't watch the news twice. And it wasn't necessary either. So I love watching the morning, the morning news. news. Yes. And really the news does, especially the morning news, does do a good job at kind of balancing like, hey, this is the bad stuff, but hey, look at all these warm fuzzies. Right. Because they know that that's how people are starting their day. That's exactly right. And if they start the day negative, people are going to have crappy Mm -hmm. days and nobody wants a crappy day. Yes, no, we don't. All right. Well, here's another thing for the adolescents. Uh, Together, you can read books or watch movies that that deal with challenges. And, you know, that's a great thing. Do you have any books that you can think of? I know you got... Um, Well... One movie that comes to mind about okay, dealing with emotions for both adolescents and the younger children okay. is the new movie Inside Out. Okay. I don't know if you've Not seen familiar, it. So if you... um, it's an animated movie and it's about handling emotions and how it's okay to be sad. Okay. And sometimes we have to be sad to create the memories that we have in our lives and to realize the good things that we have. Mm-hmm. Um There's four emotions in the movie. There's anger, joy, disgust, and sadness. And Mm. so it talks about how they all kind of play into 
how we're processing okay. things in a humorous and cute way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm even going to watch this with my ambassadors, which are my okay. older 4-H'ers, because I think it's good for everybody to kind of step back and realize Mm-hmm. Because in today's society, we're so focused on you need to be happy, you need to be happy, you need to be happy. When sometimes, you know what? It's okay mm-hmm. to be sad. That's right. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. You can teach that as early as toddlers when they're starting to talk. Yep. So that's one thing that comes to mind. I don't have any specific. That's a good books. one. Inside Out is a movie. Inside Out. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, I tell you what, can we get into talking to teens? Teens is a whole different ball game. Teens are a whole different ballgame. Mm, that's what you're anything. saying. <laughs> <I think. laughs> With anything. Um, 14 to 18 tough. year olds. Yeah. This defines teens as 14 to 18. Yeah. And teens are tough because I honestly don't think that teens even know what teens think. Right. And when I was a teenager, and I don't think teenagers have changed much, mm-hmm. you think you know everything. You do. And your parents know nothing. Mm-hmm. And you don't need your parents. Mm-hmm. And... That's actually the opposite. This is an age where kids are really influential. And I'm very thankful that I had a par- parents in my life, both my mom That's and my right. dad, yeah. understood that while I said I didn't need them, it's actually my way mm-hmm. of saying I need help. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is the age group where they stop wanting hugs. So they act. But a lot of the literature that I see with come across my FCS desk here says that this is the age group that especially needs the physical reassurance. They need it. They don't so know they need it. So hug your teenager today, yes. right? Go home, hug them, and... That's right. Encourage them to talk to you. That talking. That talking is very important at yep. any age. We're seeing that reoccurring here. So some of the reactions we'll yeah, see in ahead. teens um, is numbness, shock, reliving of those events. Um, so a little more... Mm -hmm. Then the adolescents, you'll see a lot of mood swings. And again, teenagers have mood swings because the sky has a cloud in it. (laughs) Right. I I don't understand teenagers. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Um, But watching those excessive mood swings, irritability, anxiety. Anxiety is a big one with kids. Um, It's anxiety is one of those things that's becoming more and more diagnosed. It's either more diagnosed or it's more prevalent. Depends Mm -hmm. on what side of the camp you take. Um, But helping kids handle that anxiety Mm -hmm. because teenagers are on social media. They are driving their cars to school. They're choosing their media consumption. And so they have a lot more things to be anxious about. Right. Um, Fear of similar events and death, betrayal of the future are other things we'll see with our our teens. Thoughts about the future, concerns about well-being of themselves and others. Like, they'll really start playing, though, well, what if I was in Paris? You know, I'm in French club and we're going to France Mm -hmm. next year. Or Mm -hmm. what if they would have attacked my high school? What if I couldn't get a hold of my mom? What if my cell phone was down? And that's where you start seeing that spiral down effect of pessimism about life. And And then it builds that anxiety up and up and up. And then we see the downfall of the mood swings irritability um so teens again they don't think they need you but they totally need Mm -hmm. you and as parents we know that um and teenagers if you're out there listening go hug your mom Mm -hmm. that's my word of advice (laughs) yes you bring it so that they can be reassured to continue you know and so actually this is i i love that you talk a little bit about anxiety and you went on that for a little bit, um, you know, because that's that's very real for all age groups, actually, and we process it differently. But when you see these types of behaviors that Amelia had mentioned, allow for a continuing discussion in your house. It's not a, well, we talked about it once and we're done. Yep. Continuing a discussion. And that's why we really push to sit down for dinner with your family because it actually doesn't have to be an uncomfortable, well, we're going to go and schedule talking about this with the child. Right. You you naturally talk about things over dinner. Well, and dinner at a table is kind of neutral ground. Neutral ground. Because you're not, you have food in yeah. front of you. Yeah. People tend to be nicer when they have food. Right. It's just, right. It's I so think it true. goes back to our caveman days. I think so, something. When, when our cavemen ancestors ate Mm -hmm. they were more friendly with other people around them so you know this discussion is something that it just has to happen um you know again be careful about how you're talking we want to say harmful acts not evil people 
what else would you add here about how to talk to your teens? I think re- establishing that consistent routine. Um, consistent bedtime even meals, for teens. Yes. Teens need bedtime. And I think last year we talked about sleep, um, but getting into this time of year, you know, finals are coming up. Kids Mm -hmm. stay up late. They get Mm -hmm. sick. Then they're up because they're sick and they don't get sleep. Um, But having consistent routines, playing family games. This is a big one. Um, As Chandra knows, and some of you may know, I'm a our family's a big into board games. Yeah. Um, And that is really an opportunity for you to talk to your kids. Mm hmm. Over something very casual. Right. Um, so it, it really breaks the ice versus when they come in the door. Hi, Chandra. Mm-hmm. How was school today? Mm-hmm. Like they're on the defensive. Already. Um, yep. Um, um, and then again, involving those teens in service activities and helping them plan what they want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to do a little plug for 4-H here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's one of the things that we do with our ambassadors, which are our older teens. There's in 14 to 18 is actually the age of those teenagers, okay. um, is they decide what they feel is important as a service activity. Um, I can come with all of these grand community service ideas and they're going to think they're lame um, and not have the buy-in that they'll have if they come up with the idea okay. yeah. and they implement it. And it also helps them learn lifelong skills of planning, of critical thinking thinking, problem solving, all while dealing with this terrorism Mm -hmm. undertone, but you're not bringing a lot of tension to that. Um, Also, slow down and help teens appreciate the positive things in life. Terrorism really is aimed to rob individuals and families of the security and normalcy. Mm -hmm. And so we can't we can't let that overcome. Right. So when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about um, other ways to talk with your kids and how you as an adult can deal with the stresses related to terrorism. Right now, it's 30. News and Views with Joel Heitkamp. Weekdays on Super Talk 1270. Good morning and welcome back. You're joined by Burley County today in the Extension Connection. My name is Chandra zeman Belinsky. I'm the Family and Consumer Sciences Agent. I'm joined here with by Amelia Dahl. Good morning. All right. And we're talking today about how to address the subject of terrorism with your children, uh, especially with what's going on in the news, if you're watching it all. Oh, and that is a good point here. We talk a little bit about minimizing it at home, yep. but at least you should be in the know about what's going on and even how to handle it. Because if your children aren't exposed at home, they probably will be elsewhere. That's right. the reality. We talked about the various signs uh, that could be exhibited, especially relative to stressful acts that are going on in the world by various different uh, age groups. We talked about 48 year olds. We talked about adolescents, 9 to 13, and then even talking to teens, 14 to 18. And, you know, the resounding answer, regardless of the age groups, is you do need to talk to your children. And it's okay to repetitively do so. It's probably a good idea to do something at home around dinner, sitting down to dinner together, or, you know, a neutral activity, even playing games, Amelia had mentioned. Well, let's talk a little bit about how adults can help children deal with stress in general now from terrorism. And I think this was another kind of overarching theme we saw with each of the age groups is Mm -hmm. the kids pick up on how you're you're dealing with it and what you're feeling and the actions you're taking to cope with it. So as much as we've stressed talking to your kids, it's also important to take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Um, And the first thing that they recommend is to set an example for children that helps them understand how to handle concerns Mm -hmm. about terrorist events or any other challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, Right now we're specifically talking about a terrorist event, but this could be something that's in your own home that you're dealing with, whether Mm -hmm. you lost a job, um, somebody in your family has passed away, all of those stressors are kind of all handled the same way when it comes to kids. Kids really look to the parents as kind of a Mm -hmm. mirror to see how they're coping and what they as kids should be doing based on what those parents are doing. Mm -hmm. And it says here, you know, and this makes sense to me, avoid responding if you can as an adult to current news updates in a really highly emotional way or overly dramatic way. And Amelia put it really well. It might not be just terrorism, but if 
and and sometimes you flip on the TV, well, that's not going to happen here. You never know. And one thing that you could probably relate to is if you lived here or anywhere all the way down the Mississippi River as well as the Missouri River during 2011, you may have dealt with flood-related stress. And that actually, we we handle that stress very similarly to the way that we handle terrorism, you know, so a natural disaster. So if if you're thinking, I can't really relate to this subject, well, think about how you felt in 2011. It's, once you start breaking it down, you can relate to it. Yes. Um, Most adults now were around during the 9-11 attacks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, That was something that happened on our soil in America, mm-hmm. and even though we were in North Dakota, or I was in Montana at the time, we all knew somebody who was over in New York. Mm-hmm. We all knew somebody right. who was in the military. Mm-hmm. And so think about back to that time. I was in eighth grade when that happened. Okay. And so if I put myself back in my eighth grade yeah. shoes yeah. and all of the emotion that went around with that, dealing with that as a teenager, mm-hmm. that's what our kids are kind of dealing with now. Right. Right, right. So in eighth grade, you were probably an adolescent age group or maybe even young teen. Um, I was, I think, 22 years old, but I still reacted like a teenager in that I was just numb and shocked. So that's, I don't know what your characteristics were in response. I actually remember hearing it on the news because I was getting ready for school and I was sitting on the edge of my bed and I went out and I told my parents, I said, a plane just threw into the trade towers in New York. And my mom said, oh, some pilot's going to lose their job. And then I went back into my room to finish getting ready. And I came back out and I'm like, another one just hit. And she was like, "Uh oh, something Mm -hmm. good hasn't happened or Mm -hmm. something bad is happening. Mm -hmm. And so at that point is when I kind of remember my mom, like Mm -hmm. losing that look on her face, like it's going to be okay. Right. And then that whole day at school, we sat and watched it on TV. Mm -hmm. Every single classroom had a TV in it and we watched it, which was both good and bad because it allowed us to process it with our team, with our peers. Mm -hmm. But it was also bad because I was exposed to a a media break, a lot of stuff. Yeah, Yeah. that's what you're talking about. Well, and it's probably interesting that you just said that example. So that's exactly what we're talking about. Set an example. and, And I think your mom probably was a great example, but you did see her changing from not concerned to concern oh instantly it was like so that's what we're saying to watch yep. you know if you can okay and as it's happening i mean that's different than in hindsight so yeah, that's probably a tough example um but you know if you're prepared like we're trying to do for you now you can ha- come up with a plan um so in addition to setting an example emotional example for your kids create a supportive environment so that they have a way to deal with these stressful events. And this could be both at home and at school. So Mm -hmm. make sure that they respect the plan that's happening at school, especially with the school violence out there. And and I just want to talk just for a second about empower your children. And you talked a little bit earlier about the Mr. Rogers thing. Um, Empower your children to, you know, Pick somebody at school that they are comfortable identifying with, whether it's a friendly secretary, a trusted teacher, have them, you know, know who that is that they can go to. Yeah. And what Chandra's referring Mm -hmm. to as Mr. Rogers is when we were on a break, we were talking about the Mr. Rogers quote that said, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. That's exactly. Um, And I think that that's good to have them go find the helpers, but it's also good for those adolescents and those teens to realize that they can be the helper. Yeah, yeah, and they can actually. And so one other thing about school violence and regarding school safety, encourage them to report specific incidents that might not be terrorism level, but could even be bullying threats of talk of suicide so encourage them to speak up especially to their trust think about it in the community of a school yeah bullying thoughts of suicide those are terrorisms to that community that is i mean if you look at the definition of terrorism it's planned use of violence or threat of violence toward civilians groups or societies Mm -hmm. your school is a society bullying is planned I mean, right. in the context of a school, 
it is terrorism. Okay. And so your kids are dealing with it on a daily basis, but don't know necessarily how to process it on that larger world scale. So what can you do? You're saying, well, I don't go to school with my children. Well, you can ensur- encourage, especially your older children, to actively participate, or you as a parent can help plan a student-run anti-violence program. So I'm, you know, I think our our um, we did have something like that. I went to high school back in the '90s, and we and I don't remember if it necessarily had a name, but I remember the PTO got very specific about that. So see if there's something going on in your school. Yes. All right. So another uh, thing parents can do is, and this is for other adults too, be a resource for helping your child cope as needed. Um, yeah. You may not know it, but you may be that resource for a niece, for a nephew, for a kid that lives down the street because you may in their eyes be the safe adult that's okay to talk to. Mm -hmm. So you may be that helper that Mr. Rogers talks to. So be that resource, um, answer questions, but give information and appropriate for their age level and maturity. So you're obviously going to tell a four-year-old something very different than you're going to talk to a 15-year-old about. Mm -hmm. So just be mindful of that and be that resource for other kids. Right. Right. And so, you know, and the one last pillar here that we can talk about is to help children manage their fears and uncertainty that they might be feeling, especially you can tell that that's happening in the way that they express themselves. So like Amelia said, you may talk to older teens differently than you may talk to younger children. But the point is, is that you want to be talking to them. Yes. And I, I would say that that's the big message today. Yep. So have these conversations, even if they're uncomfortable. As a recap, probably do them on neutral ground, maybe when everybody's at dinner versus set talking to them, you know, um, separately. But you, you can gauge whether or not you know, they will respond to a group environment or not. And really, you as a parent know your kids. Yeah, that's right. You've known them as long as you can longer than anyone else. So really trust your parental instincts that you've got this, you can figure it out, and it's all going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So watch the exposure to media, that emotional exposure, you know, especially if somebody is missing or or passed away from the event can be significant. So... You know, watch the exposure there. Anything else to add here? I liked that message that you had about the movie to watch. Yes. Watch Inside Out. Inside Out. Um, that's my my movie plug. Yep. And then also all of these articles that Chandra and I are kind of referencing today mm-hmm. are available on our NDSU Extension website for Burley County, as well as our Facebook page. So I encourage you to go out and like that Facebook page. We share a lot of great resources and events that are mm-hmm. coming up. Um, we do have a Youth Project Day coming up December 10th for necklace making that I just want to put a quick plug in for Mm -hmm. it's open to all youth eight and older Um, there's no requirement to be in 4-h and we're going to provide all the supplies there is a registration fee and you do need to register ahead of time so we can make sure we have enough supplies for everyone where can they register amelia um it's all online there's a link on our ndsu extension website extension website so just you know use your search engine type in there burley county extension you'll find us and you'll pull us up and then on the left hand side there'll be 4-h youth development that Mm -hmm. information you don't have to be a 4-h member to to sign up and we'd love to have everybody and then just have a wonderful happy thanksgiving don't eat too much turkey yeah eat enough so you're satisfied one last thing how long can your perishable items be left out in room temperature before they're no longer safe two hours two hours all right put everything away after about two hours have a great thanksgiving everyone take care been listening to Extension Connection on Super Talk 1270. News and information from NDSU Extension Service and representatives of Morton and Burley County Extension offices. Tell your friends to listen in for the next Extension Connection exclusively here on Super Talk 1270. ABC News, Super Talk 1270. Accurate news, stimulating talk. This is KLXX AM, Mandan Bismarck.